And my sermon title this morning is A Good Word to the Weary. A Good Word to the Weary. And the text is found in the book of Hebrews. We can't get away from it. Hebrews chapter 3, just one verse, verse 13. Remember the last message that I, I preached here. Uh, the message was entitled Spiritual Pep Talk. And it was the need for us to talk to ourselves when we're going through difficult times. You know, what do you do when you become ill? Or you're, in a sense, you're watching a loved one, in a sense, pass away before your very eyes. Or financial hardships, or you know, maybe you're being persecuted uh, in your family for what you now believe to be true, the stand you're taking for Christ. And what David did is what I encourage you to do is, is to talk to yourself. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, outwardly walking around and talking to yourself. Inside your mind, tell yourself the things that you know to be true about God. To, to think on those things, to meditate on those things, in a sense that that will help you get through those difficult times. And in Psalm 42 and 43, we see David going through difficult times as he was on the run from King Saul, or perhaps his son. And he would go from being in despair to, why is my soul cast down? Hope in God. That is our hope. And that's what we should do. We should hope in God when we go through these difficult times. You know, what we know to be true, those foundational truths, and cling to them. Everything may be falling apart, but God stays the same. Now today, I'm going to have you not talk to yourself, but to talk to other people. That you need to encourage others, because it is difficult, the Christian life. You know, you look at, you know, how Paul described it in the various different ways. You know, the Christian life has a battle with injuries and casualties. And chapter 6 of Ephesians talks about the armor that we wear, that we have to wear to engage in the battle. And he also described it you know, as a race, a, a marathon. Now, if you run the race to win, are you going to be weary? Are you going to be tired? And hopefully that's where you're at, that you're running this Christian race to win, to finish, to, to bring it to completion. And there's a, a tiredness, a weariness that comes with that. All of us have it in one way or another. And there's ups and downs in the Christian life. I understand that. But it's not an easy thing. And, and just think about... You know, some of the things that can cause discouragement, you know, your work. You know, maybe it's meaningless or, or you're not getting recognized or may, maybe people are, are lying and cheating to get ahead and, and you won't, you know, do those things so you're overlooked for promotions. Or, or, or perhaps with the inflation going on today that your financial status has changed and, and maybe you felt like, you were ready to retire, and now you're not so sure you're ready to retire, but you already retired, so what are you going to do? Or, or perhaps your family situation. Perhaps there's conflict because you're following Christ, and there's tension, and, 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 and maybe you, know, you just have a hard time relating to your unsaved family. Or, or perhaps you have a, a loved one living in sin or, or somebody that's falling away. All these things can be discouragement and they can weigh heavily on you. Or, or maybe your friends have walked away. Or maybe they're like Job's friends giving you bad advice. I heard the same once and, and it just rings so true to me, at least at times, no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> so maybe you have friends, and maybe you do all kinds of nice things for your friends, and no good deed goes unpunished. But should that change how we act, 
how we respond with those that we have interactions with? No. Other things, and I can go on, the world can be discouraged. We look around and we can be discouraged at where we're at in America today. Uh, other Christians can be a source of discouragement. You know, a lack of commitment by others or maybe a lowering of standards in the Christian community. Other sources of discouragement. You know, admonishment, correction. I know when you write a sermon, you really you're preaching to yourself. You know, when you write a Sunday school lesson, when you, when you go to seminary, it's part of God's sanctification in your own life. And, and when I wrote this message, you know, I'm thinking of myself about, you know, I need to grow in this area. You know, I need to encourage other people more. And if you look around in, in the New Testament and the epistles that Paul wrote, you, you can't see at the beginning and at the end this ongoing encouragement that Paul has given to the believers and his instruction to the believers. You know, another source of encouragement, maybe it's correction or admonishment. You know, I can be pretty good at that. You know, it's, it's easy to be an admonisher. And, and perhaps that discourages you. You know, the Bible says, you know, that faithful are the wounds of a friend. But that doesn't make it easy. You know, and sometimes you question, you know, does somebody care for me? Does somebody love me? But people, if they're admonishing you, they typically are doing it as an act of love. Not, doesn't mean that there's a guarantee for that, but that's normally the case. You know, sometimes people, maybe they come with, you know, a hatchet to bring out, to tear out a hangnail. You know, maybe, maybe they are, are a little bit strong, but all of these things can be sources of discouragement. And I'm trying to establish these things so that you can see that there is a need for encouragement. You know, there's so many reasons why we can be discouraged. We need to be encouraged. And the last thing that I'm going to mention this morning as far as things that might discourage us, you know, think about our walk with the Lord. You know, our, our struggles, you know, we still sin. We still do battle. We still, you know, we should have had success by now in a certain area of our life. But we keep on sinning. And that can bring discouragement too. But none of these things should be reasons to quit. You know, we need to be transparent with ourselves. We need to stop the facade. Be honest with ourselves. And deal with the things that we are struggling with. So, discouragement. All of us can be discouraged. And because of these difficulties, God knows we need encouragement and has commanded us to be an encouragement to each other. So, the text in Hebrews, and I'm reading out of the NASB Bible, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13 says, But encourage, and maybe the New King James that you have says to exhort, which means to strongly encourage. So encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. You now the Greek word is perikaleo, and it has a very broad meaning. You know, it can mean to urge, to appeal, to exhort, to request, to entreat, to cheer. Biblical encouragement. Biblical encouragement means communicating God's truth and hope in ways that personally strengthen others to follow his will. So biblical encouragement communicates God's truth and hope in ways that strengthens others to follow his will. Think about Psalm 121 that was read earlier today. That psalm can be an encouragement to us. When we share the truth of that song, it can be an encouragement to other people. When we reflect on those things, biblical truth you know, has a lasting strength to it. The Bible talks about you know, building your life on the rock, you know, on Christ and what he accomplished. 
and that can provide a strength to endure the things that come into our life. So we encourage by building up. We encourage by inspiring others. We encourage by filling, fitting people for battle. We encourage by pushing people forward when they're running out of energy. Now, all encouragement is good. Biblical encouragement is stuff that will stand and endure forever. You know, it's a strong foundation that will last. And, and we need to get in the habit of sharing God's word with each other so we can be encouraged in the truth that God has promised to us. So biblical encouragement is spiritual in nature. It directly impacts the inner man. And it renews our mind and our way of thinking. And it's Christ-centered in who he is and what he has accomplished. You know, all encouragement is based on Christ. You know, that's where encouragement starts. For what he did on the cross, that we have a hope that, that we have, you know, our sins forgiven. And in the end, you know, we have glory stored up for us. The victory is won. Now, I'm talking about biblical encouragement. I'm not saying that general encouragement isn't important or even unbiblical. It is very biblical. It is important for us to do other things to encourage people besides sharing God's word. You know, sometimes when somebody's going through a difficult time, you just sit with a person and be with them. You know, they may know the truth, set, but you, you just, you're with them showing, and since you care for them. So some other examples of encouragement would be praise and kind words. Or being a faithful example is an encouragement. When I see you know, Jean or Frida here every week after week and their faithfulness, that's an encouragement to me. And hopefully it's an encouragement to you. Coming alongside somebody and being assist, you know, an assistance in the ministry, you know, financially or physically, having new guys on the mowing list is an encouragement to us. And having other people teach Sunday school, that is an encouragement to your pastor. Having ladies come in to do the cleaning so the pastor doesn't have to do it, that is encouragement. It's, it's good. And it should continue doing it. Making a meal, hospital visits, a card, a phone call. And I would say when, when you're doing these kinds of things, share God's truth with them. So you write a note, you can share a truth about God that would be relevant for why you wrote the note. When you make a hospital visit, you can read scripture with a person in the hospital. And, and that could be great encouragement. And you know, I want you to see that these things are biblical. Paul writes in Galatians, Galatians 6.10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. We do good to all, but especially those in the church. You know, Paul was an encourager. Paul acknowledged faith and love and hard work of various groups of people in the New Testament. You know, you read the beginning of many of his epistles in Ephesians 1.15. I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2-3. We give thanks for you all, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love. Philemon 1.7. We have great joy because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you. So why would Paul write those things in the letter? You know, in my doctrinal statement, I don't reference any of those texts. You know, they're not like some great truth of my systematic theology are based on those things. Paul wrote these things to be an encouragement to the group of people, to the church that he wrote to. He's like, I see your faith, I see your love, keep on doing those things. And as Paul did those things, and since we should follow Paul in that regard. As we see somebody being faithful to the Lord, we should acknowledge their faith in the Lord and tell them why their faith, in a sense, is worthwhile. Barnabas was also an encourager. His name means son of encouragement. And you could do a study 
on Barnabas, and you can see all these reasons why Paul, in a sense, got that name, or Barnabas received that name. You know, John Mark had a problem in the ministry. Barnabas came alongside and restored him to service, and by the end of the epistles, you see John Mark being a great servant of the Lord and Paul being thankful for both Barnabas and John Mark. Acts 11, 23, this, speaking of Barnabas, when he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they, would, they should continue with the Lord. So God can show his love and care of his people through others in the church. That doesn't work apart from means. So when somebody in the church shows you love or shows you kindness or, or praises you, that is as if God is doing it. It's an extension, showing God's love. God uses his people since to accomplish these things. You can be an instrument in the Redeemer's hands by becoming an encourager. I need to do a better job. And I would hope to encourage you to keep being an encourager. Because if you were to see the text that Paul writes, he says, I want you to be an encourager just as you're doing. It's like you're doing it, but keep on doing it. This is important within the church. You know, that we have all these one another commands. This is an important one of them. So now that I've introduced the concept of encouragement, you know, who are we to encourage? Who are we? So we may think, well, I'm looking for people going through a difficult time. You know, who's on the prayer list? You know, we'll encourage them. You know, who's, who lost a loved one? Yes, all those people need encouragement. But the text says here, one another. Everybody needs encouragement. Your pastor needs encouragement. Your deacons need encouragement. Your Sunday school teachers need encouragement. We all, new believers in Christ, need encouragement. You know, so old should encourage the young. You know, a lifetime of following Christ is worth it. You know, they, you know, God has been faithful. You know, God has delivered me from all my difficulties. I want you young people to know that about my God. It is worthwhile serving Christ. They have much to be shared with the young. The young can encourage the old because of their energy and their vigor, and, and they can, in a sense, show themselves to be picking up the mantle and going forward with the gospel, and that can be an encouragement to older people in a church. You know, it's important for us to have younger people in our church. You know, there should be a good mix of old and young working together you know, strengthening each other for the cause of Christ. You know, parents should encourage kids. And, you know, sometimes we see that as a, a job of, a full-time job of correction. But there needs to be encouragement there. And, and even after your kids are out of the home, you need to be an encouragement to them. You know, how are they raising their kids? You know, how are, are they, in a sense, functioning as a husband and wife. And, and, and surely there's something that they're doing that you can encourage them about. Now, I know at time there needs to be admonishment. But I, I think that needs to be weighed with the encouragement. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. All these texts, these one another texts, we're going to encourage each other, everybody, is in the context of the church. These one another commands are in the content. One another. In Hebrews it says, Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. You know, we need to be here, and when we're here, we need to encourage each other. And so now I want to say, you know, the only way that you're going to be able to be encouraged yourself or to be an encouragement to other people who need encouragement is for you to be here. You know, you need to be here Wednesday night. You need to be here Sunday school. 
You know, I know there's reasons why you can't be at every service and every time the church doors are open. I understand that. But it should be your desire to be here. You're needed here. And it's good for your soul to be here, to get that encouragement. You know, in Sunday school, there's more interaction that we have. There's more time of, you know, being able to talk to each other, to get involved with personal issues in one's life. Same thing on a Wednesday. You know, you can come early and inter interact with people here in the church and get to know what's going on in somebody's life. So the tech clearly says who we are to encourage, but what should we encourage? So who is one another? Everyone. We don't know who might be discouraged. Everybody needs to be encouraged. But what? And the text here doesn't say. You know, it's kind of vague. I think it's vague on purpose. We need to figure it out. I think we can encourage right attitudes and, and, and right beliefs and right actions, but we can also encourage those that are struggling with their faith or, or those that are going through a trial and a, and a difficulty. You know, all of us are weary to some degree because we're running the race to win the race. All of us need to be encouraged, and God's word can be an encourager. We should share God's word and, and God's truth. And, and we think about this world and all the stuff going on in this world. God's word gives us so many things that we could reflect on. He is the maker of, of heaven and earth. He is sovereign. He is in control. He knows everything that's going on. He is all powerful that he could deal with any issue that he saw fit to deal with. And we should take comfort in that. His way is perfect. God is holy. God makes no mistakes. The battle has been won. Have you ever received an encouraging note from somebody? I'm sure you have. How many times have you read that note? I mean, once? Twice? Do you keep them? Do you have a drawer full of them? Is it you pull them out when you're going through a difficult time to reflect on somebody acknowledging some important truth in your life? Maybe showed some appreciation and shared a biblical text. Great are your rewards in heaven. These things are important to do. So encouragement is, is just not for those that have the gift of encouragement. It is listed as one of the gifts in Romans. The command here is for everybody. Encourage one another. If you want to encourage somebody, surely you can find some reason to encourage them. It's not like, well, I don't, I don't know anything to say. I don't know anything to do. Surely you can find something. You, you can find something. And, and since we should have a desire to be that kind of a person... You know, to be a son of encouragement, to be a Barnabas. So this needs to be ongoing in nature. So the text doesn't tell us what we should encourage, but when, it does address that. So when are we to encourage? And here in the text it says day after day. And it's continuous and it's ongoing. So it's not one and done. It's not... Well, I, I encouraged this person last year, so now I'm looking for somebody else to encourage. This ongoing nature. Not just those with need. It's day after day. Our problems exist daily. There's, you know, things come up in our life every day that we pray about, that we need help for. We can point people to Christ day after day. We can point people to the truth in God's word day after day. So encouragement should be daily. Admonishment should be, you know, as needed. In a sense, and when you encourage, it opens up a door for correcting somebody. You know, if, if for three weeks straight you were encouraging me about things, and then you came to me and said, hey, can I talk to you about something, Pastor Mark? I would have a tendency to listen to you. 
because I, I know that you care about me because you've demonstrated that over a period of time. I'm going to take your words seriously. In a sense, it, it opens up a door for some of these other commands that we have. We're, we're really good at admonishment. You know, but we don't want to be people with critical spirits. And, and if, if that's the kind of person you are, people will avoid you. And people will stay away. And, and yes, we need to address sin in others' life, but we need to leave room for the Holy Spirit to work. So when you encourage new believers, so somebody gets saved, I don't write a list of, here's sins I know about in your life, here's what you need to overcome. We don't do that. We don't. We, we leave room for the Holy Spirit to work because we know it's a growing process. We let the Lord work through the preaching of his word and the reading of his, his scripture. I'm not saying we never go to people with issues. We do at times, but we have to allow room and we have to give other people the benefit of the doubt. We you know, tend to be very critical of ourselves or, or other people, but in a sense, give ourselves the pass. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. That's in the NASB. So you're encouraging. Keep on doing that. So that's what I say to you. You're encouraging. Keep on encouraging. And we see here in the text, you know, the urgency of this encouragement. It says, today, not next week. Not next month, not when perhaps something might come along. Today, encourage one another. It's urgent. It's needed. Make it a priority. Don't put it off. These things are important. You know, for a child to grow up healthy, he needs the socialization and encouragement a family can provide. Right? Everybody understands that? You know, for a child to grow to be healthy, he needs a family's encouragement. He needs the support of a family, the interaction of a family. The same thing is true for a believer. You know, he, he needs the encouragement of fellow believers. You know, he needs that interaction. It's important for believers to be in church, to be here, to be connected. So the text tells us when we are to encourage, but why? Why should we encourage? And the text says here, because of this deceitfulness of sin. Deceitfulness of sin. You know, there's this hardening process that when you sin, you make it easier to sin the next time. And, and if you sin the next time, you can sin then again more easily. And since you lowered, and since the doors, you open the doors, and you shared your conscience, and it becomes easier and easier to sin. So you might have, in a sense, wrong thoughts about God. You know, maybe you made false accusation about God. God doesn't care about me. God doesn't love me. And you think that way, and you dwell on those things, and, and soon enough, those thoughts grow and, and since magnify themselves, and, and now you're cursing the name of the Lord. Now, Job didn't do that, but I've seen Christian people that name the name of Christ get to that point in their life. People that followed God for many years of their life, and they just throw it all away. You know, something happened in their life where they question that God is good or that God cares. Or perhaps... You know, deceitfulness of sin. Somebody falls into sin or, or compromises one of God's commandments. You know, did God really say that I can't do something? And they start to play with sin, dabble with sin, and then there's this hardening process now that you're opening yourself up to more and more sin. In a lifetime of that, you show yourself to give yourself away to sin. You're not even a believer at all. You know, that you never were a believer so people need encouragement. And the implications of the text is that we can make a difference. 
You know, that do this so that none will be hardened. You know, we should see the importance of it so much that, you know, we don't want anybody to fall into sin and be hardened by it. So we're going to work really hard to be, to be an encourager. Encouragement can make a difference. You know, you hear testimonies from people about their Christian life, and oftentimes you'll hear that there was somebody in their life that made the world a difference. That God used a person, in a sense, to strengthen them, to get them go through a difficult time. A Sunday school teacher, maybe somebody in the senior high group, you know, maybe in a sense somebody felt alone. You know, I didn't have any friends, but a Sunday school teacher reached out and made a difference in that person's life. In a sense, helped them get through these struggles that they had about God and his goodness. We need to be an encourager. People do fall away. You know, there's probably somebody here in our midst by the time the Lord takes them home, have they fallen away? Think 10 years ago, who used to be here amongst us that's not here today? People fall away. And they show themselves, in a sense, they never were believers, but we could be an instrument that God uses so they don't get hardened with sin, in a sense, an instrument in their sanctification. God gets the glory. God gets the credit for sanctification. God's doing the work through the Spirit. But God uses people to accomplish that. God doesn't work apart from me. And God can use you. So, sadly, encouragement is not natural for many. And we're better at building ourselves up. You know, we can have a critical and judgmental attitude towards others. You know, our, our first thoughts sometimes are negative versus positive. And hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully you see the good in people. When you, when you think of somebody, that's what comes to your mind first. And we have to fight that because in a sense, the before our salvation, we tend to be negative people. We get saved, we see the sky is blue. We have a great hope. And, and we look at life differently. You know, so hopefully we can, in a sense, put off these negative thoughts and, and look to esteem others and encourage others. You know, even if nobody's encouraging you, maybe you're going through a discouraging time, that doesn't exempt you from encouraging other people. There's probably people here that are discouraged for one reason or another. You still are to encourage other people. And what I have seen, what I have found, is that when you start encouraging other people, you will be encouraged. There's a, just how it works that way. Encourage other peoples and you will be encouraged. So why we are to encourage? But now let's look at how we should encourage Well, it's by what we say or do. You know, the sharing of God's word is most important. You know, we should, when we have fellowships, there should be a fellowship around the word. You know, we should be sharing the truths with God. We should know God's word. We should be comfortable with opening up our Bibles and taking people to an important truth, to, to something relevant in their life. Romans 15, 4 says, For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction so that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. There's all kinds of things in the scriptures that can provide hope for us. So sharing God's word, our examples, our words of kindness and praise, acts of kindness, praying with other people. It takes skill and effort to build somebody up. It takes no skill to tear something down. Think of the stuff we did here around the church. You know, it was easy to bring down the ceiling. You know, we just start ripping things apart. But, you know, building something new, that takes a skill. That takes time. 
a carefulness to it. So anybody can be a critic. Anybody can be an admonisher. It, it takes a little bit more to be an encourager, and, and we need to do that. God calls us to do these things, and throughout the scriptures, you know, Paul is telling us to don't go weary of well-doing. Even the unsaved world knows the importance of encouragement. You know, this is non-biblical stuff, but you know, patting a fellow on the back is the best way to get a chip off his shoulder. You know, Mark Twain says, I can live for two months on a good compliment. Are these things not true? You know, encouragement costs you nothing to give, but it's priceless to receive. It's easier to point a finger than offer a helping hand. We need to be encouragers. And God wants us to encourage, and lasting encouragement comes from God's word. And I want you to understand the distinction there. We, we encourage many different ways, but God's word is preeminent. It's the apex of our encouragement. We need to share the truths of God and what he's accomplished for us. You know, Paul in 2 Thessalonians 3.13, But as for you, brother, do not grow weary in doing good in Galatians, and let us not grow weary while doing good. And Paul, writing to his ministry partner in Crete, Titus 3.14, And let our people learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, that they may not be unfruitful. In a sense, be encouraging other people by your good works, by you know, meeting urgent needs. That's helping other people within the church, this connectedness that we have. So one verse, but a lot of responsibility. One verse, but it's very important. We, we want each and every person here, this should be our desire to serve the Lord, to follow the Lord, the Lord takes us home. You know, you are my brother. You are my sister. We have a responsibility to each other. We need to encourage one another. And, and we need to fight the natural tendency to be critical in our spirit, to be encouragers. And realizing that even though somebody may seem to have everything together, that doesn't mean that they are not discouraged. One another, everybody. And will we take these things seriously? I hope so. So, in conclusion, it's going to offer you some tips in becoming an effective encourager. Know and use God's word. Know and use, you know, sustain the weary through the word. I remember years ago, somebody gave me a counseling book on, you know, for the, these different situations in life, these are good verses that you can use. So somebody struggling with this, somebody going through a trial, somebody through a difficulty, and then you start studying those verses, memorize those verses, somebody having a marital problem, or somebody struggling with pornography, or now with Google, it's a lot easier to find a verse, but it became a help. You know, so I was prepared, no matter the situation, somebody struggling with you know, this going on in their life, there was something from God's word that I had readily available that I could share with somebody. So hopefully you're equipped, you know, a good workman, unashamed. You need to be, you know, a person that God can use to make a difference in somebody. We're all called to counseling. All of us have that responsibility. It's not just the pastor's job. We are to be encouragers, correctors, but encourage is the most important. So know God's word. Make it a goal to be an encourager every time you meet with other Christians. So just make it a habit of saying something that would be encouraging to them. Just make it who you are. I had a friend when I was unsaved, name was Scott, I may have shared this before. I knew he was a Christian. I didn't really know what he believed or why he believed it, but I knew he was a Christian. He was different than everybody else. Everybody loved being around Scott. And why was that? He was an encourager. 
You know, he, he found something good about everybody, and he was just very free about sharing that. He wasn't building himself up. or I mean, he was very gifted, very talented. But he, he, he in a sense, said great things that encouraged you. And, and he made a difference. I mean, I took notice of him. And then when I was, in a sense, introduced to the gospel in a, in a more detailed way, you know, when I was looking at the text and studying, I was thinking of Scott. And, and that, in a sense, came into a mind of what a real Christian was and, and start to understand why it was, he was different. You know, God did a work in his heart, and you could see it. Uh, the next thing I have here, you want to be an effective encourager, you know, it requires prayerful consideration beforehand. You know, so think and pray, and God would draw attention to people that might need encouragement. Everybody does. And maybe particular things or ways that you can encourage. Oh, Lord, who can I be a blessing to today? Who, who needs, in a sense, a kind word? Who needs help? Who needs a friend? Being a good listener. You know, listening itself is in a way to be an encourager. You know, you can listen to other people. And oftentimes when you listen you'll hear needs that people have. You know, they, they, they will kind of give you a little insight into their life, and you can pick up on things if you're a good listener. And then you can be an encouragement to them. And then the last thing I have here is practicing it. You know, do it. Encourage. Make it just a way of life, a natural part of who you are. Be somebody that's known as an encourager, as Barnabas was. And your life will become rich as you see God impact others through you. I mean, it's when people that you know and love take steps of growth, you're blessed. And you see new people in our church coming and being faithful and considering memberships, and you're encouraging them and helping them. That helps our own heart. That's an encouragement to us. So Paul tells us to encourage. I hope you will be an encourager.